So in the next topic, I would like to show you how to plot a point in polar plane. So the polar plane looks like this. So it consists of a polar axis, which is the horizontal axis. This is called a pole. You have the radial coordinates. And these are the angular coordinates. This is called the polar plane, and we're going to plot the point in coordinate system in this plane. So first, there is a few notes I want to mention before we dive into a little bit of exercise or practice how to plot a point in polar plane. The first one is that the polar representation of a point is not unique. In fact, every point in the plane has an infinitely number of representations. However, each point in the plane has only one representation in the rectangular coordinates. So let bear with me here. I'm going to show you some example to illustrate these two bullet points a little bit later. So R in this case is the radial coordinate or the distance of the point from the origin. Um, when you look at R, you want to see how far you can go out from the origin. And for theta is the angular coordinate, which is the rotation or the angle between the positive x-axis or the polar axis and the light segment connecting the origin and the point. There are two situations for theta. When theta is positive, you want to rotate the angle counterclockwise directions. When theta is less than zero, you want to rotate the angle in the clockwise directions. Now, when plotting the point on the polar coordinate system, two things you must consider, that is the angle theta and the radial r. So first consider the angle theta. When theta is positive, again, you rotate the angle in the counterclockwise directions. And when theta is less than zero, you rotate uh, the angle in the clockwise directions. When R is positive, you want to move along the terminal ray. So these are the terminal ray. And when there is a negative sign in front of R, remember R is always going to be positive right? because that is the distance. But when you see a negative in front of the number, um, that means it's not a negative distance, but it's indicate that you must move along the ray that is opposite to the terminal rate of the given angle. So let's jump into the example and I will illustrate this particular point a little bit later. So in the example three, we want to locate four different points. So for the first point, you get two comma pi over four. So you have, this is equal to r comma theta for r is equal to two and theta is equal to pi over four. And when you see the portal plan here, there's a few information that you might want to know. So the first one is the polar axis. This is the pole where r is equal to zero. Um, these are the terminal rates. And uh, this uh, circle right here has the radius one. So this is r equal to one. So r equal to one. The next circle is the circle with radius two. So r equal to two. The next circle is the circle with radius three. So r equal to three. The next one is r equal to four, then r equal to five, so on and so forth. All right, so in the case, in the first case where r is equal to two and theta is equal to pi over four. So theta in this case is a positive angle. So you rotate the angle in the counterclockwise rotations. So we're going to move along this terminal ray. Okay, and r is equal to two. So you count outwards. So this is r equal to one. So this is r equal to 1, this is r equal to 2, and you stop at a theta equal to pi over 4. So this is the point that you're looking for. So this is 2 comma pi over 4. 
The next point we're going to consider is negative 3 comma 2 pi over 3. So this is r, this is theta. So theta is equal to 2 pi over 3, which is a positive angle as well. So you rotate that counterclockwise. So go up here. r is equal to negative 3. So there's a negative in front of the number 3. So what you do is that instead of moving along this ray, you're going to go to the opposite of that ray. Right, so you count one, two, three, and that this is the point that you're looking for. So this is negative three comma two pi over three. So again, theta equal to two pi over three. So you go counterclockwise up to here, but because r is equal to negative three, so you move to the other directions. Now the next point is r equal to 4 and theta equal to 5 pi over 4. So this is r, this is theta. So theta equal to 5 pi over 4, this, that is the positive angle. So you rotate the angle counterclockwise to 5 pi over 4. So this is the rate that you want to move along with. And r is equal to positive 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is the point that you're looking for. This is 4 comma 5 pi over 4. The last point is r equal to negative 3 and theta equal to negative 7 pi over 2. Now for theta equal to negative 7 pi over 2, that is a negative angle, so you want to rotate the angle clockwise. So bear with me here. So you start at 0, you rotate clockwise, so negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 2 pi, negative 5 pi over 2, negative 3 pi, and negative 7 pi over 2. But r is equal to negative 3, so you move to the opposite directions of the terminal ray that you would stop at earlier. And this is the point that you're looking for. So this is the point negative 3 comma negative 7 pi over 2. So hopefully this four example give you some idea how to locate a point on the portal plane. Now I would like to go back to the previous bullet point here, this two bullet points. That is the polar representation of a point is not unique and in fact every point in the polar plane has an infinitely number of representations. So what do I mean by that? So if you consider this point, right, so this point has a present has a representation of negative three comma negative seven pi over two. But if you notice that this point can also be described using the representations of positive 3 comma negative pi over 2. So how could that be the case? So negative pi over 2 is counterclockwise. So negative pi over 2 is negative angle. So you rotate the angle clockwise right here. You stop it at this point, negative pi over 2 and r is positive number so you stop right here right similarly you can go negative pi over 2 negative pi negative 3 pi over 2 negative 2 pi and negative 5 pi over 2 and that is there is another representations of that point that is 3 comma negative 5 pi over 2 and because you just go on and on and around the circle as many times as you like there's no restrictions whatsoever therefore you can conclude that this point one point on the polar plane has infinitely many number of representations so hopefully that illustrates the first two bullet points that you see earlier um, however when you convert this point even though they used to represent the same point on the polar plane. When you convert this, pole, this point in polar coordinate system to rectangular coordinate system, they have a different representations in terms of x and y. So you have to be careful with that. Okay. Um,
So, so far, what we have covered is that we learn how to convert the point from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. We know how to actually locate the point on the polar plane. In the next topic, what I want to do is that I'm going to continue using the same set of formula, conversions formula, in order to convert the equations in one coordinate system to another coordinate system. So for example, you have the equations of the form theta equal to pi over three. So this is in polar coordinate system. So it's in polar form. And you want to convert this into a rectangular coordinate system. And remember, theta is related to x and y in terms of our tangent of y over x. So instead of writing theta equal to pi over 3, you do our tangent of y over x equal to pi over 3. And to get y and x, what you do is you take tangent on both sides of the equations and you get y over x equal to tangent of pi over 3 and tangent of pi over 3 is equal to root 3 and therefore you can rewrite this equations as y equal to square root of 3 times x so what you see here is when theta equal to pi over 3 is actually the equation of the line in the form of y equal to root 3 times x. And this equation is in rectangular coordinate system. In part b, you have r equal to 3. So you want to rewrite this equation in terms of rectangular coordinate system. So r is equal to 3. And remember, you can relate r back to x and y through the formula x squared plus y squared equal to r squared. So first, I'm going to square both sides of this equation. And I obtain r squared equal to 9. And r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And this is equal to 9. And what you obtain is the equation of the circle center at the origin with radius r equal to 3. So circle center at the origin with radius 3. Now for part C, um, I would like you to fix this one a little bit instead of 2 theta. Uh, just rewrite that into theta. So for this equation, you have r equal to 3 times psi of theta. And for this, what, when you go back to the conversions formula, you see there is kind of the relationship between um, y and psi of theta. In fact, y is equal to r times sine of theta. So to make r appear on the right-hand side of the equations, what you do is you multiply r on both sides of the equations, and you get this is r squared equal to 3 times sine of theta. And r times sine of theta is actually equal to y, so this is equal to 3y. And on the left hand side, you have r squared that is equal to x squared plus y squared. So in fact, this is x squared plus y squared equal to 3y. And that is the equations r equal to 3 times psi of theta in terms of the rectangular coordinates. Well, in the next example, you have r squared equal to 9 times cosine of theta. And again, when you go back to the conversions formula, you see there is the relationship between cosine of theta and x. In fact, if you have r on the right hand side, that would be very wonderful in order to use that for um, to convert um, the right hand side to x. So to do that, to make r appear on the right hand side, you multiply both sides of the equations by r. So you have r squared times r equal to 9r times cosine of theta. Um, so the right-hand side now becomes, so this one is x, the right-hand side becomes 9x. 
And on the left hand side, remember R squared related to X and Y through the formula R squared equal to X squared plus Y squared. So for this R squared, you get that is X squared plus Y squared. And now for this R, right, if you take the square root on both sides of the equation, X squared plus Y squared equal to R squared, you're going to get the square root of x squared plus y squared equal to 9x. And if you combine these two terms together, we get the result x squared plus y squared to the power 3 half equal to 9x. And again, this is the equations of r squared equal to 9 times cosine of theta in terms of the rectangular coordinate system. Now, in the next example, we want to convert the equation written in rectangular form to the polar form. So, problem A, you have x squared plus y squared equal to 16. And again, through the conversions um, formula, you have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So, this is r squared equal to 16. And if you take the square root on both sides of the equation, you have r equal to 4. Remember, r is a positive number, it's the distance. So when you take the square root, you just take the positive value. Okay. Now for b, you have x squared minus y squared equal to 16. You have x related to r and theta. You have y related to r and theta through the conversion formula. That is x equal to r times cosine of theta and y is equal to r times sine of theta. So I'm going to substitute x by r times cosine of theta square minus y equal to r times sine of theta square equal to 16. And then we have this is r square times cosine of theta square theta minus r squared times sine squared of theta equal to 16. Um, so you can stop right here. The idea is that can you use the correct formula to convert from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. Um, but you can go a little bit further by rewriting take r squared as a common factor and you get cos squared of theta minus sine squared of theta equal to 16. In the next equation, you have 3x minus y equal to 2. Um, again, you have x equal to r times cosine of theta and y is equal to r times sine of theta. So that's what I'm going to do. So 3 times r times cosine of theta minus r times sine of theta equal to 2. And r is the common factor. You factor out the r and you're left with 3 times cosine of theta minus sine of theta equal to 2. For d, similar idea, you have y equal to r times sine of theta altogether square equal to 4 times x, which is r times cosine of theta. And r square equal times sine square of theta equal to 4r times cosine of theta. Um, because you don't want the radius to be equal to 0, if radius is equal to 0, you just have the pole, right? Uh, or the origin for that matter. So you can just get rid of r on both sides of the equations. So you have r times sine square of theta equal to 4 times cosine of theta. And this is the equations of y squared equal to 4x, but in terms of the polar coordinate system. Um, so in the last two examples, we look at how to convert from one coordinate system to another coordinate system using the conversion formula. Um, so you learn how to plot the point on the polar plane, and you basically can use that technique to plot a curve in the polar coordinates.
Um, so I'm not going to go into details of this particular uh, topic because uh, nowadays we have technology help us to uh, plot all kind of fancy plot in both um, the polar coordinate system and rectangular coordinate system. So I'm not dwell too much into this. Um, it's just that the basic idea is very similar to what you have learned before in order to plot the graph of a curve. Uh, so what you do is you set up the table. Uh, one is for, um, for example, when you want to plot the equations R equal to two times KSI of theta. So you'll make the table of two columns. The first column is for theta and the second column is for the value of R. And it just basically, you go into uh, go through all the points of theta and calculate the corresponding value of r and then plot that point on the polar plane and connect the points together when you get the curve when you get the graph of the curve um, in fact there are as many fancy graphs related to the polar coordinate system um, the circle the cardioid um, the limicon uh, there's a lot of fancy uh, tools out there that help us plot this kind of plots. So one of the tools that we can use is desmos.com. That's the website. Another tool that we can use is called geogebra.com. Let me show you the plot in desmos.com.